In Genesis, Jesus Christ is the seed of the woman. In Exodus, he is the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he is our high priest. In Numbers, he is the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. In Deuteronomy, he is the prophet like unto Moses. In Joshua, he is the captain of our salvation. In Judges, he is our judge and lawgiver. In Ruth, he is our kinsman redeemer. In First and Second Samuel, he is our trusted prophet. In Kings and Chronicles, he is our reigning king. In Ezra, he is the rebuilder of the broken down walls of human life. In Esther, he is our Mordecai. In Job, he is our ever-living redeemer. In Psalms, he is our shepherd. In Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, he is our wisdom. In Song of Solomon, he is our loving bridegroom. In Isaiah, he is the Prince of Peace. In Jeremiah, he is our righteous branch. In Lamentations, he is our weeping prophet. In Ezekiel, he is the wonderful four-faced man. In Daniel, he is the fourth man in life's fiery furnace. In Hosea, he is the faithful husband, forever married to the backslider. In Joel, he is the baptizer with the Holy Ghost and fire. In Amos, he is our burden bearer. In Obadiah, he is mighty to save. In Jonah, he is our great foreign missionary. In Micah, he is the messenger of beautiful feet. In Nahum, he is the avenger of God's way. In Habakkuk, he is God's evangelist crying, Revive thy works in the midst of the years. In Zephaniah, he is our savior. In Haggai, he is the restorer of God's lost heritage. In Zechariah, he is the fountain opened up in the house of David for sin and uncleanliness. And in Malachi, he is the son of righteousness, rising with healing in his wings. In Matthew, he is the king of the Jews. In Mark, he is the servant. In Luke, he is the son of man, feeling what you feel. In John, he is the son of God. In Acts, he is the savior of the world. In Romans, he is the righteousness of God. In 1 Corinthians, he is the rock of all deserve. In 2 Corinthians, he is the triumphant one, giving victory. In Galatians, he is your liberty. He set you free. In Ephesians, he is the head of the church. In Philippians, he is your joy. In Colossians, he is your completeness. In First and Second Thessalonians, he is your hope. In First Timothy, he is your faith. In Second Timothy, he is your stability. In Philemon, he is your benefactor. In Titus, he is truth. In Hebrews, he is your perfection. In James, he is the power behind your faith. In First Peter, he is your example. In Second Peter, he is your purity. First John, he is your life. In Second John, he is your pattern. In Third John, he is your motivation. In Jude, he is the foundation of your faith. In Revelation, he is your coming king. He is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is the keeper of creation, the creator of all. He is the architect of the universe and the manager of all times. He always was, he always is, and he always will be. Unmoved, unchanged, undefeated, and never undone. He was bruised and brought healing. He was pierced and eased pain. He was persecuted and brought freedom. He was dead and brought life. He is risen and brings power. He reigns and brings peace. The world can't understand him. The armies can't defeat him. The schools can't explain him and the leaders can't ignore him. Herod couldn't kill him. The Pharisees couldn't confuse him. The people couldn't hold him. Nero couldn't crush him. Hitler couldn't silence him. The New Age can't replace him. And Oprah can't explain him away. He is life. Love, longevity, and more. He is goodness, kindness, gentleness, and God. He is holy, righteous, mighty, powerful, and pure. His ways are right. His word is eternal. His will is unchanging, and his mind is on me. He is my redeemer. He is my savior. He is my guide. He is my peace. He is my joy. He is my comfort. He is my Lord, and he rules.